around the city and see some of the sites. Okay, there we go. So I'll just briefly go over who DuraSpace is for those who might not be aware. DuraSpace is a not-for-profit, it's a legal entity, 501c3 is what they call it, um, we're set up in the U.S. DuraSpace was really born out of two academic projects, the DSpace repository and the Fedora repository. These two projects came under the umbrella of the DuraSpace organization in 2009. Since that time, DuraSpace has expanded in scope, uh, not in mission, but in scope. We now incubate other open source projects, so we're not limited to DSpace and Fedora. Recently, we added Vivo, which is another open source project under our umbrella. And we also have an arm within DuraSpace that provides services. We're mainly focused on cloud-based services. Those are DuraCloud and DSpace Direct, but we also offer some educational services. And we've added these products and services really as part of our sustainability model to take what we offer as part of our value proposition, which is to steward these projects and add services to our community to really diversify um, where we can get revenue from in order to sustain the operation and sustain the open source projects. So how we're organized, um, we have projects. We re I really look at this as business units. Projects is one business unit and services is another business unit. On the project side, the work that we do um, associated with those projects, which is employ a dedicated technical lead, employ in most, ca most cases a dedicated project or product manager, depending on where the open source uh, code is in the life cycle. Those people are paid through a sponsorship program, which I'll talk about, sometimes grants for new developments in those open source projects, uh, and also what we have is a registered service provider program. So these are uh, businesses that resell our software um, to the community by adding um, services to that software and then we get some portion of that revenue back to help sustain those projects. On the services side, we charge um, money for our services. They're typically subscription services and those funds pay for the cost of running the service but they also contribute back to the open source projects. Um, so for example, DSpace Direct, that's a cloud-based hosted service. Uh, the revenue that we make from that pays for the operation, but then it also helps pay for development of the open source uh, project as well. We might put some of the funding towards better documentation. We might put some of the funding towards developing a particular feature uh, when there's extra revenue coming in from those services. This is the role DuraSpace provides the project. So, so one of the big misconceptions um, that we've experienced as we've taken on stewarding these open source projects is that DuraSpace, you have lots of developers there and you do all the coding and you produce the roadmap and then you, you do the release. Well, actually DuraSpace does very little of that. We provide um, some technical leadership to the project, but all the developers are out in the community. So. We have revenue coming in that supports the work of DuraSpace, but we rely heavily on contributions in kind from the community. And those come in the form of developers, uh, people that write the documentation, people that do the testing. So we think of DuraSpace as actually kind of the glue in the community that helps move those open source projects forward. So these are the types of things that we do within DuraSpace. We provide some executive leadership and strategic planning for the projects. We develop a number of community programs and provide opportunities for awareness in the community. We do fundraising for the projects. Um, we provide technical leadership and typically some product management, marketing communications. Um, and then legally, we provide a home for the software, so we hold the IP. Um, we provide infrastructure, I mean websites and wikis and issue tracking systems for the projects. And then, of course, uh, administrative support for the project. So over the past six years, really, where I've been working on these two projects and then the broader Endura space, here's some of the things I really think that help make projects sustainable. So one is that you really need adequate resources to do the work. And this can be financial contributions in kind, but you have to figure out what that mix is in order to sustain the project. Um, <coughs> most projects that I've seen, particularly coming from the academic community, are usually funded by grants or the government to start. And then 
lo and behold, four or five years later, you have to figure out what is that sustainability model to keep the project um, going on and enduring beyond the grant cycle. And so to figure out what resources you're going to need to do that and to figure out what the ratio is, community support versus um, you know, financial support, I think is really important. And it, and it should be adequate or else you're going to reduce your value proposition to the community. So in other words, if the software doesn't continue to advance to meet the ever-changing goals of the community, they're not going to use the software over time. So you need to continue to invest in the project. It's not done once the grant period is done. You need engaged stakeholders. So many times projects start with a few institutions or what we call PI, a primary investigator. That's really the, the visionary and the person and the institution that's really driving the project. But in order to make it sustainable over time, you really need to involve more institutions and more people to build your community. And one way to do this is to really figure out who is using and promoting the use of your software or your service, and then really engage with those folks, providing them roles um, within the community, which they can really I identify to and create their own sense of purpose um, around your project. And you need mechanisms to engage the stakeholders, and I think one way that I found an effective way to do that is through governance. So if you have a governance structure which gives stakeholders a way to weigh in on what they feel is important and a way to validate what you're doing, they can then advocate on the behalf of your project and then build the community. In order for any project to be sustainable um, in this type of environment, you really need a shared common need. So understanding what the value proposition is not only to you, but all the institutions that are involved in this project. There should be a shared common need or else the work required to collaborate <coughs> Um, is far higher than the perceived benefit. Oh, these look kind of oval <laughs> um, on my screen. So um, one of the things I talked about was transitioning from grant, grant to project funding. So in 2009, this pie was 100% grant funding. And so one of the big focuses of my work over the last, whatever that is, five years, was to really change the pie from being all blue to being more colors <laughs> in a very simplified way. So right now, we still have um, about 25% of our funds come from grants versus 100% in 2009. 57% comes from sponsorship, and 18% you know, comes from services. So in the next two years, my projections are the pieces of this pie in an ideal world will be a third, a third, and a third. That's always been my goal, to get to a very diversified um, portfolio, revenue portfolio, to reduce the risk of any piece of the pie um, not coming to fruition in any given year. And you can see some variation between 2012 and 2013. The, the pie has shifted, but, but the pieces have all made up the same number, which our run rate is about $1.8 million, just as a, as a data point. So what is sponsorship? So you've heard a little bit about membership. Sponsorship is similar to membership with the exception of sponsorship is really a charitable contribution that is given by either a user or institution. So in other words, um, and, and all of our sponsors are actually institutional members. So our stakeholders are universities, primarily university libraries, and they become sponsors to DuraSpace what that means is they're giving a charitable contribution for us to continue working and deploying either DSpace, Fedora, or Vivo. So their money is directed to a specific project, and they become a sponsor of that project. Um, one of the benefits they get by giving money to that project is that they, beget, they get to participate in the governance of that project. So at a certain level of funding, they have the opportunity to sit on one of the governance boards of the project. Um, but really, that's, that's the, key, the key benefit to being um, a sponsor, other than, you know, you're really supporting the work of DuraSpace in keeping these projects um, sustainable. And so this is, uh, we have four levels this year, um, but actually we take contributions of any kind. So we have many smaller institutions that are donating. Uh, I think the lowest amount I've gotten is $100. Um, you can do it on PayPal. Um, so, but you can be in one of those other categories at higher amounts. This is some of the, the types of ways people contribute in kind. And it, 
bring up the FT number, but if you look at um, how many FTEs we have outside of Duraspace, about two FTEs per project inside Duraspace, full-time equivalents, that's what that means. Um, outside of Duraspace for each project, uh, DSpace has, I say, about 25 FTEs that are coming from the community at any given time, doing all these variety of roles. Fedora is probably more about 12. Um, so, as I said, one of the key things is really engaging and empowering your stakeholders uh, and building a broad and diverse community. So, if you look at, um, we have 1,700 institutions using DSpace, Fedora, or Vivo um, all throughout the world, and really trying to build these communities and empower them to do what they need to do to be successful is part of the strategy. This is one example of governance. So Duraspace has a um, board of directors, uh, but then for each project we have a project governance board. And this is really where uh, the stakeholders come together and look at the strategic direction of the project and figure out how the project can move forward. Does it need more resources? If so, where do we get them? So you have your community of users, which includes sponsors, technical contributors, <laughs> committers, and then you have an advisory committee, a steering committee, and then a project team, and then working groups that work with those uh, boards in different capacities. Vivo also has a project governance. Um, at Duraspace, we don't dictate what the project governance should look like. We let each project come up with a governance board that suits that particular project. Okay, and so in closing, um, some words of advice for someone that's been trying to build sustainability model the last six years for Duraspace. Um, we found that engaging with your, engaging your stakeholders through participation in governance is really in the long run going to have a significant impact on the success of the project. You know, just having the project be at MIT or University of Virginia or Cornell or any really the founding institutions uh, makes it really difficult to sustain in the long run unless that institution is going to always contribute the bulk of what is required for the software to endure. Ensure your project meets the needs of your stakeholders. So again, that's coming with the diversified board and group of stakeholders that you're working with outside of your institution. This is an interesting one. Develop project champions beyond the initial creator. So we are usually taking projects from um, transitioning them from that initial creator to who is going to be the next champion. And I think that's really important to create the passion around the project. Focus on sustainability early in the project life cycle before you run out of funding. We have lots of projects come to us after the grant funding is over. It makes it much more difficult to build a sustainability model. And then share the work by creating broad, diverse community of users. Thank you. Thanks, Vera Piana Cloud. Um, we have here the IPR and policy advisor.